The Ober Commando West, battle hardened and newly equipped, are a resurgent and very dangerous foe. Despite being challenged by an economy nearly shattered after years of continuous war, the Ober Commando West still managed to field some of the most impressive heavy armour yet seen. The technical prowess of Germany is on full display as devastating armoured force equipped with a new generation of super heavy tanks repeatedly counter-attack the US forces attempting to drive into the heart of Germany. 70 ton King Tigers are supported by well trained infantry, the Salt Stern Pioneers lead the way, while capable Volks Grenadiers are a threat to enemy infantry and vehicles alike. In this video, you will learn how to play the OKW faction. Let's begin by looking at their HQ building, also known as Tier 1. First up, we have the Stern Pioneers, a four man squad good at close quarters combat, costing 300 manpower and 7 population cap. Next, coming in at 5 men, we have the Volks Grenadiers. They cost 260 manpower and 7 population cap. Next is the Coop Wagon, costing 210 manpower and 3 population cap. And also we have the Raketenwerfer, anti-tank rocket launcher. Coming as a 5 man squad, 290 manpower and 7 population cap. And finally, in tier 1, we have the MG34, a 4 man MG team, costing 250 manpower and 6 population cap. The SWS Supply Half Shack is a vehicle that you must bring onto the field to unlock future technologies and other buildings. So you convert the Half Shack here into the Battlegroup Headquarters, the Mechanized, and also the Schwerpanzer Headquarters. It also must be positioned on any own territory that is in supply. It costs 70 manpower and 15 fuel to bring onto the field. So guys, before we get into Tier 1, I just want to quickly talk about the uniqueness of OKW and the fact that they're the only faction in Company Heroes 2 and Company Heroes 1 to get up to the rank of Veteran C4 and 5. Uh, as you can see here, I'm going to make these um, Stern Pioneers Veteran C4 and these Volks Veteran C5. Just to show off how elite these units can be and how, um, how well this faction does in the late stages of a match. If you keep your other units alive, that is. So here we go, guys. When you start as playing as the OKW, you start with obviously your HQ building and your Stern Pioneer Squad. The Stern Pioneer Squad is probably and arguably the best starter unit in the game at the moment they are incredibly good at close quarters combat they are very expensive as well however though at being at 300 manpower they will though decimate any other squad they come up against in the in the start as long as they manage to get the jump on their opponent and they're utilizing cover as they have come with sdgs very good at close quarters combat the third pioneers can be able to have two upgrades and they can have both upgrades on at the same time as well now uh, they can upgrade a panzer shrek for 60 munitions and they can also get a 30 munition Minesweeper support package. The support package increases their repairability as well as obviously cutting wire and clearing minefields. So here you can see here guys we've upgraded the sweeper on the Stern Pioneer squad. But that we actually have a benefit here. What we could do with this squad is put the Minesweeper away so we could bring back full firepower onto our squad which is very handy. However if they put away their Minesweeper they could still get hit by mines. So if you're pushing into an area what I would advise is pop on the Sweeper quickly just to quickly check for mines and then quickly press D again on your hotkeys to get them back, back to their full uh, firepower. Because if they're carrying around the Sweeper they lose 25% of their firepower capability right. So only ever have the Sweeper on uh, if you know if you want to push a new area check for mines and then as soon as you get into combat turn it off and then you're good to go with the, with the full squad. So for 60 missions we can upgrade the Shrek, like so. Uh, but if we upgrade the Shrek, that we do lose 25% of our firepower against infantry. But you know this is maybe not a bad idea to get one Shrek on your stern pioneers if you're lacking AT. Um, it's just a nice bit of extra um, diversity in terms of your AT build. Okay, if you get a Shrek on your stern pioneers, especially if you don't pick a Panzer Fusilier commander, as that unit, the Panzer Fusilier, is the only other unit in the game for OKW which can get Panzer Shreks. Okay. So guys, um, the Stone Pioneers can build both a shoe mine and but reinforced steel barricade. So this barricade cannot be run over by light vehicles and things like that. However, it does take longer to plant. I've got myself some standard Pioneers here from Austria just to show you guys the difference in build speed. So we'll build that and we'll build this here and you'll get an idea of how long, much longer it takes to build a reinforced barbed wire piece compared to a standard piece of barbed wire. They're already done and they're still about halfway doing. So it's about twice as long to build a, a stretch of barbed wire like this. Okay, however, this is better type of barbed wire as it will deny ve light vehicles, whereas this light, vi light barbed wire here from the Pioneers can easily get crushed by any type of vehicle. Stern Pioneers can also repair. At Veteran C1, they gain the ability to drop a concussion grenade. So we're going to give this Stern Pioneer squad a Veteran C now, one, one pip of Veteran C. 
That then unlocks our ability to lob the concussion grenade for 30 munitions. This will not do much damage to this grenade, but it will stun the enemy squad or squads for a short period of time, as I'll now show. I've made my stern pioneers invincible just for this demonstration purposes. But as you see, if I lob the concussion grenade on top of that group of riflemen, both squads will get stunned. And as they're stunned, you can see they're not returning fire. However, it only lasts for a short while, maybe three or four seconds, and they're back up again. However, not bad grenade ability if you want to maybe turn the tide of a battle as, you know, as that enemy squad is not returning fire for a short amount of time. That may be the edge of you winning that fight, for instance. So guys, let's now talk about medkits. So, the Stern Pioneer Squad can lay three medical crates down for 45 munitions. Generally, I would advise you to put them around your HQ building. If you put them too forward on the front line, maybe enemies could steal them. So generally, put them around your HQ building. There we go. Now, when it comes to the med crates, guys, the squad that picks up the med kit, like so, will benefit from the healing. If I was to move this squad away from the other squads, they wouldn't benefit from the healing. So I have to keep the squad that picked up the crate near my other squads to be able to benefit. However, we do not need to stay ar around the box itself. So we could just grab the med kit and just start going straight to the front line if we wanted to do so, as long as we're fully reinforced. We've got to make sure, though, and they're all really close to the squad that picked up the kit. Because you can see, if I move slightly away... But that guy, even though he's right next to the squad, he's actually benefited from the healing. Okay? So you need to make sure they're all nice and close. And I've tested it, and a complete squad that has got no health at all, if they pick up a med kit, they gain around about 70 to 80% of their full health by picking up one med med medical crate. Next, guys, I want to show you guys off the salvage operations ability that the Stern Pioneers also have access to. Volks Grenadiers also have this ability, which I'll go on to search show in a minute. So let's say you were to take out an enemy vehicle, or even one of your own vehicles were to die. Like so. You can then press C on your hotkeys, and then go up and left click the wreckage. And what will happen is you will recover five fuel from the destroyed vehicle. Like so, five fuel. You can also use the salvage operations ability on decrewed weapons, like this, this gun here. Or this Maxim. And also, if you were to, for instance, destroy this, this gun... Even destroyed this guns like this, or destroyed weapons, uh, you can come up and salvage their wreckages as well. And still get the same amount of resources. So guys, I just want to warn you about the dangers of salvaging. Just like when you are caught repairing, you will take received damage. And quite a lot of received damage at that. So if we come over here, we try and salvage this Maxim, you'll notice that my squad is going to drop super quickly as it's been caught out while doing a task. Like so. So always avoid salvaging if there's enemies nearby. Only salvage if it is safe to do so. Stone Pioneer Vegency ranks are as follows. Vegency 1 unlocks the concussive grenade ability. Vegency 2, combat expertise increases the squad's survivability. And weapon control when under fire. Vegency 3, mechanical and structural expertise enables the squad to repair objects faster while veterans improve weapon accuracy. Vegency 4, additional training and practice allows the squad to construct objects faster, reduces cost of con concussive grenade ability. Vegency 5, combat expertise reduces the risk of repairing while under fire. So right now, it's 30 munitions for the concussive grenade, but if we were to vet, uh, uh, vet them up to, what was it, rank 4? Combat Vegency 3 ranks. And then one more. It then makes it 10 munitions cheaper from 30 down to 20 for the concussive grenade ability. So guys, next we're moving on to the next unit, which is the Volks Grenadiers, the core fighting infantry unit that you'll be using for OKW. So there are five men infantry squad. They excel at long range rather than close range. Like General Axis uh, core infantry fighting units. They can build sandbags, like so. You build, click A and then Q to build some sandbags. But there we go, we've got our sandbags, and then we can get our squad to stack up behind the sandbags, and now we're in cover. Awesome. The Volks, they can upgrade to SGGs if they have a converted headquarters. So this means your SWS truck that you're building from your base. 
This is your tech vehicle that you bring out. You got to set up and then upgrade the truck itself to then access the SDGs. So for the med truck, we'll get onto this in, in more detail later on. But generally, build your med truck um, close to your HQ so then the medics can benefit the guys uh, who are, who retreat to your HQ building. So that's why you keep it close to that. Now we have our battle group headquarters set up. We then still can't upgrade the SDGs. First, we need to click this bit, this button here. Mechanized battle support group for 100 manpower and 20 fuel. Once that has been teched, like so, you can then upgrade the SDGs for 60 munitions on your Vox Grenadiers. So here we go, boom. And then two men of the of the Vox squad will get SDGs, and this will make them better at kind of medium and close quarters combat. Vox Grenadiers have some abilities as well. They can lob incendiary grenades and fire Panzerfausts. They get access to their 30 munition incendiary grenades once a SWS truck has come out onto the field. So guys, for the Panzerfaust, you get that also at the same time you get unlocked the SDGs. So the battle group headquarters, for instance, needs to be set up and upgraded. So the incendiary grenades are good against taking out maybe emplacements if they're not braced, as well as uh, machine guns in buildings. So I'll just quickly demonstrate this. Let's just sort of incendiary grenade on this building here. And you'll see that the incendiary grenade will do quite a lot of damage to that building over time. We'll then maybe push and try and hit this machine gun over here as well. And you'll see that grenade being used on a machine gun in a building also takes a lot of damage. As you see, that's, that MG is taking loads of damage on that side of that building. See, one incendiary grenade brought it down to past half health. So two grenades in total will be enough to completely destroy an emplacement. There you go, that took out the MG in the house with that incendiary grenade and it's about to go down the mortar pit. The, the incendiary grenade is just a great way to force your opponent out of green cover. So let's say they're stacked up behind some sandbags. You love the incendiary grenade there. If they stay in it, they're going to die. And the grenade lasts a, a short while as well. So they can't just jump back into the cover position like you would do maybe against a another normal standard grenade type. Because you, the grenade, you stand, lob a standard grenade, explodes, and they just jump back onto the cover. But this grenade has a damage over time effect, area of effect on the area, which is so it's great over denying cover for a short amount of time. So Vox Grenadiers also can again come with the 25 edition Panzerfaust like the Austere Grenadiers do and it's just exactly the same ability in that regard. It um, helps damage the engine of light vehicles and below and also medium vehicles uh, and above once their HP has gotten down to about 80%. That will then issue a damage engine critical on those vehicles. But yeah, very good at snaring vehicles, the Panzerfaust. Also, and as I pointed out beforehand, like the Stern Pioneers, they also have access to the Salvage Operations ability. So we're now going to talk about the Vox Grenadiers Veteran C ranks. Veteran C1, Veteran Soldiers increase their squad survivability within combat. Veteran C2, Combat Expertise increases the squad's accuracy and weapon control while under fire. Veteran C3, Fieldcraft and Training increases survivability. Veteran C4, the squad has increased field awareness when in cover. And Veteran C5 enables the squad to heal themselves when out of combat, which is very nice. So next, let's go on to the Coop Wagon. The Coop Wagon here. Costs 210 manpower and 3 population cap. It's very fast and it can capture territory. Has a machine gun on the back. So I'll just now show you guys. Go around and cap stuff. We'll crush fences and, and light terrain objects like that. And it can cap territories fairly quickly. Good wagon itself in terms of its combat capabilities is... Good against just infantry on their own. Um, it could maybe like harass some infantry, maybe an engineer squad or like a rifleman squad. Um, good at check, maybe to, you know, uh, uh, killing snipers um, and, and spotting camouflage units. It's got a good ca uh, camouflage detection radius. Uh, also, efficiency when it has detection. So let's just say if we um, let's come over here and make ourselves a Soviet tank or something or some weaponry. So we know that there's a mortar and a Katusha here. So when we activate this, this will spot um, enemy units potentially. So let's uh, drop by this one. I think this only uh, spots infantry units, not um, not tanks and stuff. But I'll uh, just double check this for you guys in a second. So if we activate this ability, I'm ready. Go. and have an icon above the head to indicate that it has got the uh, is, is using that ability. But also notice its speed is uh, significantly reduced. But as we get close, see look look, look at the mini map to the bottom left hand side. The enemy unit is, is pinged up on the map there. We know it's a mortar because we can. Zoom in uh, onto the tactical map like this so we can see what it is, where it is. So it has a really good radius of spotting enemy units through the uh, the fog of war. Turn the corner. We know there's a Katusha there as well, but 
It didn't spot the Katusha this ability. So generally, guys, when using the Kuba Wagon, I will use it as just a harassment unit and just constantly having it capping the territories. In, in terms of the late game, it will become a lot less useful because it will, um, you know, it just dies to like any 180 tank gun round will probably kill it. Uh, any tank that shoots it will likely bring it down incredibly low. I mean, I think an anti-tank gun shooting it will bring it down to like 10% health or less. So, you know, it's super fragile. Um, and uh, yeah, generally late game, you just want it capping, capping the fringes, capping the extra, you know, the territories around, around, the, around the sides on, on a map. And then maybe having it idle near the front line with this mode on just to spot enemy units. So then maybe you could follow up with artillery to, to, to bombard the units that you can see through the fog of war through the use of this ability. So the Cooper Wagon's Veterancy ranks are as follows. A Veterancy 1 it gains the detection, revealing nearby infantry units. Veterancy 2, battle hardened crews operate the vehicle with great efficiency, significantly increasing mobility. Veterancy 3, vehicle veteran vehicle crews can repair their vehicle when out of combat, so it repairs itself automatically if um, you know when it's out of combat. Veterancy 4, elite crews are better able to operate their mounted MG, increasing burst duration and accuracy. And version C5, combat expertise increases the squad survivability and enables it to lay down some more suppressive fire. So vet 5, it gains the ability, his machine will start suppressing units. Let's just give this an example, let's fed it up to version C5. And then you'll see that the kill wagon Ready to execute. Prepare to execute order. will fairly quickly now suppress enemy units. So guys, I'm just going to demonstrate now that the kill wagon gains shared vectorancy. The, the kill wagon won't actually fire. In this engagement, he'll just be nearby the, the stones which are actually getting the vet, getting the kills. But you'll notice the Kuba Wagon's veterans here, the bottom left hand side, his experience bar will go up when the stone pioneers do damage. So watch this. Selection, owner, enemy. And you can see the stones are doing damage, the Kuba Wagon isn't actually doing anything, and the Kuba Wagon's gaining veterans seat. Just by being near the action. Next, we're going to go on to the Rakettenwerfer. Now, OKW is the only faction in the game to be able to start with an anti-tank gun in their HQ building. Uh, unlike other anti-tank guns in the game, it doesn't have green cover for its crew members. As you can see here, there is no green shield to indicate that they are benefiting from cover. So they are very easy to attack and, and kill from the front with vehicles, uh, not only just from the sides as well. But always, if you are attacking a Rakettenwerfer, you always want to be attacking from the sides so it can't shoot you back. Um, so here we have the Rakettenwerfer. It's a five-man crew. Efficiency 1, it has the ability to camouflage. So it's gained one stripe of efficiency. Now we have the ability to camouflage. However, while it is camouflaged, it cannot move forward. It is stuck in it's stuck in position while it is camouflaged, okay? So now you must uncamouflage it, then move it forward. And then once you're happy where, where it's set up, you can then re-camouflage it like so. Rakettenwerfers are also the only anti-tank gun in the game that can actually get inside garrisons. They can get, get inside buildings like so. So you guys can see, you can see the weapon inside the building there pointing out of the window. Like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a austere pack gun right next to the Rakettenwerfer so you can just compare their range sizes. So here's the pack gun's range. And a Rakete and Werfer's range is pretty much the same, to be honest. I, can't, I don't really personally see a difference there, so uh, it looks like to be the same. So in terms of Rakete's ranks, they are as follows. Veterancy 1 unlocks the camouflage ability. Veterancy 2, combat expertise increases, weapon targeting, and rate of fire. Veterancy 3, first strike out of camouflage increases the armor penetration and damage of the rocket. Veterancy 4, advanced crew training increases mobility, so they move the, the, uh, the weapon around faster. Version C5, Advanced Combat Expertise increases the weapon rate of fire. So I'll uh, just to give you guys a, a demonstration here of maybe uh, a Version C Rakuten and a non Version C Rakuten firing up against an uh, enemy vehicle. So a Version C5 Rakuten weapon is super deadly, especially for vehicles that die to two shots because as it fires faster, if you get if you accidentally like move into the range of a Rakuten weapon like so, you were to take a shot and then you were trying to move away from it. The Rakuten weapon has a Version C5 is fires so so much faster that you will not it's very highly unlikely that you'll be able to get out of dodge by the time the second round comes in even if at max range there if it was a fresh vanilla rocket weapon let's say we made the mistake and we had our vehicle here it got shot by the rocket weapon 
We have plenty of time to get out of line of fire before the Raketan Warfare can fire a second shot off, okay? So you can see there, there's the big difference in play there between a vanilla, a brand new, fresh Raketan Warfare versus a Veterancy Raketan Warfare. Right. So here we have two Pershings. We have the Veterancy 5 Raketan Warfare hidden in camouflage here and a standard brand new Raketan Warfare here. And we'll just show you guys the difference between the two. Drive her over to that location. Notice how this Raquet Warfare is firing a lot faster. There you go. So, the Vegetacy 5 Raquet Warfare better at there killing the, the Pershing than the, obviously the brand new one, but you get the idea there. The veterancy one, um, you know, gets that extra firepower in there. Uh, and also, you know, gets that first strike chance out of camouflage. Does more penetration damage as well. Um, and obviously it fires faster, which is just the main advantage of it's there of the veterancy fire of and Warfare. So one other awesome thing about Raketan Warfare's guys is that like every other infantry unit, it can retreat. And run all the way back to base. It's the only anti-tank gun in the game that can actually retreat back to base. Every other anti-tank gun, like a pack gun like this, you'd have to manually reverse it back. Like so. So guys, let's now go on to the MG34. We can't build the MG34 just yet because we need to get one of our SWS trucks out and convert it into a mechanized or battle group headquarters so that we can uh, recruit the MG34. So let's do that right now. So for 70 manpower and 15 fuel, we'll bring on the SWS truck. Now, with the SWS truck, you can upgrade it to either the Battle Group Headquarters or the Mechanized. We'll go and talk about these units in separate videos. Set up the Battle Group Headquarters again next to your, your main HQ building. Command Headquarters. You unlock the ability to be able to call in and recruit MG34 crews. You do not need to upgrade the battle, group, the battle group headquarters with the mechanized battle group support upgrade here. You can ultimately just need to set it up and you can call on the MG34. So let's do that. MG34 squad is Recruits from the building and here we go. So what's the difference between this MG34 and an MG42? Unlike an MG42 on an Austria variant, it can also, you know, as it's an OKW unit, it can go up to veteran C4 and 5. It's also got access to veteran C1 um, via incendiary armor pissing round ammunition. Uh, um, and as you've seen beforehand, it may be in, in the Austria boot camp. It's very good against um, training of infantry as well as light armor. So let's just give a quick demonstration of, uh, of the MG34 in action. So I'll just show you an example again of how effective the MG34 um, is with its incendiary rounds against, for instance, this uh, M uh, against this AA half track. Activate the armor for incendiary rounds. Uh, even, even in no cover and even pinned, we were able effectively to kill the AA half track. So there you go. And we gained Veterancy 2 out of that. So uh, the incendiary armor piercing rounds, only 15 missions, very effective against lightly armored targets like the AA half track that the Americans can field. The MG34's Veterancy ranks are as follows So Veterancy 1 unlocks the armor, incendiary piercing rounds. Veterancy 2 increases weapon proficiency, improves suppression and field control. Veteran C3, advanced weapon proficiency improves burst control and accuracy. Veteran C4, combat expertise increases squad survivability. And finally, Veteran C5, specialized weapon training and combat experience increases field awareness and weapon accuracy. So a Veteran C5 MG34 is absolutely devastating against infantry in, turn, in the late game. Uh, and especially obviously if it's back up behind green cover. And now MGs in particular and other... Uh, weapons like the AA half jack, flak half jacks, and things like that now automatically have a manual reload button so that when you finish an engagement, you can manually reload your machine gun so it's got a full magazine in the belt 
so it can fire at approaching enemies. One of the worst things you don't want to happen is your MG to fire a short burst and then reload as a big blob comes in, and then as it as it's trying to reload, the MG gets itself killed because it was during the reload animation, right? So uh, that manual reload is super uh, awesome ability now that has been added in recent patches that we can now use on um, quite a lot of units, uh, specifically MGs. So now, guys, I want to talk about two more units that you can possibly get in T1 if you choose a certain commander. If you choose the commander Breakthrough Doctrine or Grand Offensive Doctrine, you can have access to Panzer Fusiliers at right from the get-go at the start of a match. If you choose Elite Armor, you can also have access to the 221. Panzer Fusiliers are a five-man squad coming in at 270 manpower and seven population cap. So, here we have some Panzer Fusiliers. They're a five-man squad. They can be equipped with Panzer Shreks for 100 munitions, two Panzer Shreks. Or, they can be equipped with G43s for 80 munitions, and they get an extra man. They can only get these upgrades once your battle group headquarters or your mechanized is set up, as I'll now show. So, the battle group headquarters needs to be set up, and you need to upgrade the mechanized battle group su support upgrade here. Once that is done, you are then able to upgrade the, the recall package, or the Panzer Shrek package. You can't choose both. Now, the Panzer Fusiliers start, actually start off kind of worse than Volks. They're not as good as Volk, Volks Grenadiers. However, they scale much better in the late game with their upgrades. So, we're going to upgrade the Recon package on one, and we'll make another Panzer Fusilier squad and upgrade it with Panzer Shreks. So you can see here with the Panzer Shreks, we get two, and we set it as a five-man squad. But with the G43s, we actually can reinforce our squad with six men, and we can see here that we have three men on the squad with G43 upgrades. Now, a G43 Panzer Fusilier is very effective. It's got good survivability because it's a six-man squad. has access to lobbing 30 munition standard grenades. And it lobs an anti-tank rifle grenade, pretty much the same thing as a Panzer Faust. And it can sprint a Veteran C5 by the use of some munitions. And at Veteran C1, it gains a flare for 35 munitions. So here's it at Veteran C1. We can pop a flare in the sky like this. And then this will be a flare that will light up a small area for a certain amount of time, which could be great to, to give yourself vision to maybe if you want to drop RT, or if you want to spot an enemy unit, maybe you want to give vision for your Jagdtiger later on down the line. Dropping flares in the sky for your, uh, for your Jagdtiger or your artillery would be a great, a great thing to do. And it's only 35 munitions. So once we give it Vision C5, we now unlock the sprint for 15 munitions. So this is how much we, far we run standard. We press C and activate sprint. So this is a great way to get right up, maybe if you want to chase down an enemy unit. We, doesn't matter, we can be in combat with this as well, which is very nice. It's only short short sprint, but it can get you ahead to maybe rush in there to finish off a squad or retreat. Maybe lob a, get an AT rifle grenade, maybe finish off a vehicle, something like that. That sprint is very handy. And, I, and, and personally, guys, I think the Veteran C5, G43, Panzer Fuselers are probably the best infantry in the game. They are really, really good. I'll now give you an example of how effective this squad is going to be against shock troopers, for instance. These are elite infantry of the Soviets. So let's say the shock troopers are charging at the G43 squad. So even before we get on top of the G43 squad, we've already lost two men. There you go. And the Panzerfuser squad only lost one man out of that, and that was an elite squad. And you think about the Panzerfuseliers, they only originally cost uh, two seventies to bring onto the field. If you if you play with them well, you vet them up during a match, they will really pay off for you in the late game. They're definitely, in my eyes, the, one of the best squads in the game. Now, let's go on to the other version of the Panzerfuseliers, the ones with Shreks. The Shrek squad just has the access to lob a model grenade. They do have access to the sprint and the flare as well, but they lose the ability to lob a snare. Having two Panzer Shreks is very handy in your arsenal because you could maybe mix the mix up your build with having some some Volks grenade, like one Volks grenade in the build to build yourself cover. Because Panzer Fusiliers themselves have got no construction options, so you always want at least one Volks grenade with your Panzer Fusiliers so you can build yourself cover. And also because, obviously, Volks Grenadiers, as I pointed out earlier, are better right at the start of the game than, than Panzer Fusiliers before they get their upgrade. So you maybe want to mix and match. My, my personal favourite build at the moment would be 
something, if I can afford to do it, would be this. Would be one Volk for building cover, one Panzer Fusilist Scott with Shrex, and then three Panzer Fusilist with G43s. This is perfect. Maybe, if you know, if you haven't got enough resources, or maybe, you, you know, you, you can't afford to get the, the extra squad, maybe just dump out one G43 squad. So if you've at least got two G43s, one Volk squad, and the one with Shrex, and that's a very good, nice, diverse build there, and they can complement each other very well. Last but not least, let's talk about the 221. Here we can build this in tier 1 for 220 manpower, 15 fuel, and 4 population cap effective against infantry. So, guys, if you choose Elite Armor Company, you have access to build the 221 right from the get go. To call on the 221, first of all, you need to call on an SWS truck, like so. As soon as you've done that, you don't even need to set up the truck, you then can call on the 221. The 221 is a very fancy unit. Comes with quite a few abilities and different, up and, and it can upgrade to a 223. To upgrade to a 223, it needs to have your one of your trucks set up and upgraded. There you go, bad group is set up. Can't upgrade it just yet. Upgrade the mechanized backup group support. Once that's done, now we can upgrade the FUG-12 radio set, so it then becomes a 223 once you upgrade that. Now, before we upgrade it, the 221, as it is at the moment, is still quite effective against infantry. However, as it is not upgraded, it's going to be, his armour is super paper thin, um, light infantry fire from just rifles and, mach and machine guns will act, will damage it quite significantly. Once you've upgraded it to the, up the, the other variant, like so, that becomes a 2 to 3 and it has a visual difference and up, you know you can see it's physically different because it's got this um these metal bars around around the hatch and one other thing it can now do is actually lock down on a, on a resource point and double the income from that resource node so here we have a resource point we've just captured we're getting five miniatures and three fuel so you can see our income right now is 11 and 7 so we expect that to go up by that go to 16 and that to go up by 10 plus 10 okay so now we're going to set up there you go, 16 and 10. So there you go. It doubles any any kind of resource income that you set up on. Okay? So if you wanted to go set up at the munitions point, we'd get double munitions income. And same thing for the fuel point. So there you go. When the 221 is set up, you can clearly see it is set up because you'll see some fuel can, uh, some fuel oil drums, as well as some munitions boxes uh, set up by it. And however, once it is set up, it cannot be moved. You need to then... Disable the lockdown, and you need to wait a few seconds, about five, six seconds, before it can then move once you initiate that button. Move over there. So maybe account for that delay if you need to get away from maybe an enemy attack that's coming around the corner. The 221, once it's upgraded to a 223, uh, is still very vulnerable against um, anti-vehicle fire. For instance, anti-tank guns, uh, bazookas, piats, anything like that will damage this very significantly, or and enemy tanks as well. The 221 and the 223 have the, the ability to lay down medical supplies in the base. To that location. Like so. You see he's doing it because the gunner drops down to drop them in, on, on the floor. And unlike the uh, the Stern Pioneers, where they drop three down, these 221 only drops one down for 15. Okay? There's the same kind of value you're getting out of uh, there because each, each medical crate costs 15 uh, to put down. This is quite handy if you're on the front line battlefield you just want to drop one crate down to heal your troops up without having to retreat them to the base. With this commander choice as well, if you were to take damage... So... If you took damage, you do have access to emergency field repairs for 35 munitions later on in the commander. Once you unlock this ability when you have enough command points to do so. So then you activate that when it's out of combat and your vehicle will become immobile and won't fire back, but it will be able to heal itself uh, fairly quickly and get back into fighting fitness. Version C1, the 221 has access to a smoke drop. Pops smoke around itself, so this is a good way to get out of dodge. Let's say, you know, you were set up on a point, you activate that ability so you can, you can, you can hide yourself as you try and unpack and then run away. And then if you manage to get the 221 to version C5, it can then lay down regal anti-tank mines. Better than telemines, as they will be guaranteed to disable the tracks of an enemy vehicle. So if an enemy vehicle runs over that, they will be immobilized. 
costing 50 munitions. Ready for action. What? The 223 also has the signal relay, which allows it to pinpoint enemy vehicles through the fog of war automatically. So, up ahead, there are some Shermans that I planted earlier on. And as we get close to them, they should appear on the mini map before we even see them. So, yeah, we know there are enemy Shermans out there, and we can tell by looking at the mini map um, that they are vehicles. And if we want to clarify what vehicle they are, we click on the tactical map, and then we can see by the icon and hover over them that we can see it says M4A3 Sherman tank. So, there we go. There's another extra ability that you can gain with the 223. I will now show a demonstration of the 221 and the 223 compared against infantry. Just to show, give you an idea of how much how important it is to spend the extra resources here on the FG on the FUG 12 radio set to upgrade it to a 223. Only costing 100 manpower and 15 fuel. So here I'll show you guys the difference between the two. We've got two riflemen on each side here. And we'll just engage both of them and you'll see the difference between how much difference the upgrade makes on the 223. So you can see the one in the back not taking too much damage, but the one without the upgrade, the 221, significantly taking much more damage from just standard rifleman M1 Garand fire. Black security is engaged. So that 221 was unsuccessful, where this one over here has only just gone down past half health and can easily solo those two riflemen. As long as those riflemen don't use their AT grenades. In general, I always avoid getting this close to riflemen because they could snare you, so try and keep your distance in future. By just giving you that as an example to show you guys the difference between the health of an unupgraded 221 uh, and a 223. The veterancy ranks for the 221 slash 223 are as follows. Veterancy 1 gains the defensive smoke ability, improved weapon accuracy, and make the vehicle harder to hit. Veterancy 2, advanced vehicle training, improves vehicle sighting and weapon accuracy. Veterancy 3, Metal hardened crews improve vehicle mobility, survivability, and weapon accuracy. Version C4, access to special munitions allows the crew to deploy Regal 43 anti-tank mines. Version C5, when using the lockdown ability, the 223 receives less damage. And uh, one other thing, guys, the 221 is really good at chasing down snipers. If, if the sniper's trying to retreat away from you, uh, the 2221 getting on top of that will kill it very quickly. Also, um, even if it just finds a sniper out in the open, it just drives right up to it and it does a quick burst down. It should kill it within one, uh, two burst maximum. So here we have a sniper and we're going to try and chase after it here. As we are a 221, we are faster than the sniper retreating. As, as long as we try and keep to a road, we should easily be able to catch up to it here. And once we get closer to it, it should be a piece of cake to finish it off. See? Very good at chasing down snipers. So there you go, guys. That is the end of part one. Part two and three should be following this video shortly. And if you are not subscribed, please do. And you'll be notified next time when I will be releasing those videos. Uh, thanks again, as always, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.